is your emergency contact? Who should we notify in the case of death? Welcome to the USP, where I spent the last two plus decades of my life. You know, during the incident when uh, the DCs murked that uh, Merc Pro from uh, Texas, there was other things that was going on in the unit that caused such a commotion. You know, but before I get to that, I just want to give you a little background on how it led up to that with the white boys. Now, when I say white boy, it's not used in a derogatory term as if somebody was called a black dude boy. The white boys call themselves white boys. And that's the terminology that we use in there that they use. You know, and pertaining to this story, there's a dude, he's from uh, FV, Family Value, which is a white boy gang, and his name, or his nickname, is White Boy. So, when I'm saying White Boy, for this particular video, I'm referring to White Boy, that's his name. White Boy and Roscoe, they're tight. You know, I mentioned Roscoe before, he's from St. Louis, and he functions with everybody. Same thing with White Boy. You know, one, me and them, we're pretty cool, we're pretty close. Me and White Boy got close when um, we had an incident with the Blacks. It was just a standoff. You know, nothing nothing came of it. But he had came and offered me, you know, a piece, which is a knife. He's like, hey, man, I got mine stashed over here in a block over here. You know, because in the unit, in the yard, everywhere you go, People that are affiliated or just anybody in general that's in, the, that's in the penitentiary got knives stashed everywhere. They got them stashed in the wreck. They got them stashed out in the yard. They got them stashed in the unit. Because a lot of times, some people don't really want to have it on their persons because a CEO can come in the block or on the yard or wherever you're at and be like, hey, let me pat you down. Hey, let me, I want a strip search. And take you to a room and strip you out. So to prevent you getting caught slipping, people just have their shit, you know, stashed throughout the penitentiary. And I know where all the stash spots are as far as goes with like people I fuck with. You know, they tell me, hey Mesa, if you ever need one, I got one behind the bathroom under this rock with this branch hanging over it. You know, one of my friends, uh, He's a North Star Familia. I had an incident out. It wasn't an incident, but there was a, the native dude and his white dude that had some issues going. And I was the only one out in the yard with them. You know, a white dude had, had accused his native dude of being a rat. But the white dude's on the other side of the fence that he's talking to. They're trying to figure out what was going on. But I'm on yard two, and I'm the only one that's there with his native dude. And the native dude ended up checking in or whatever at the end of the day. But, you know, the issue's been brewing and everybody on the yard knows about it. So when I was, so when uh, the homie uh, from the North Star Familia, I'm not going to say his name because I know there's policies between these different races and stuff that they're not allowed to aid and assist you in that type of way. But he came up to the fence like, hey, Mesa. I said, what's up, homie? He said, hey, man, if you need something, I got one stashed over there by the fence on the track where the leaf is at. I said, hey, good looking out. And I went over there to go check the spot. I moved the leaf, around, you know, the little branch around over the spot, and I could see the end, the handle part of it. And then I covered it back up so I know what's there. So while the native and uh, the white dude is having a conversation, I'm standing over there. So if something does pop off, I can grab it and run over there to aid and assist. But I got friends from different races, whether they're black, white, Mexican, that, you know, at any given time, if I ever need something, they'll give it to me, no questions asked. And not only that, they let me know where their stash spot is, just in case they're not in the unit or they're not on the yard with me when shit goes down. <clears throat> so we had a little confrontation with the blacks in the unit over some issue. And at, and at that time, 
you know, when I'm walking around to have conversation with dude, white boy pulled up on me and he was like, hey, homie, if you need something, it's over here. I said, all right, good looking out. So me and him got real cool. I always been fucking with Roscoe and them, them two were sellies. So give me the history, like these dudes, they go hard. You know, Roscoe, you know, he can box. The dude's got hands. I've seen him train and, you know, sometimes I might have the delusion that I know how to fight a little bit, right? But when I see him, but when I train with Roscoe, like I can't hold his water. That dude is pop, 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 pop. like he's he's official. And during the time we've been in uh DA over there in Florence, he's beat up like three of his cellies. Right? And it is these aren't little dudes. Like the last incident he got into was with a big old dude. The dude was about six, six one, six two, and Roscoe, he's my size. <clears throat> And the dude, you know, I, you know, they just fought in the block, heads up, because they were sellies at the time. And, you know, win, or, win, lose, or draw, they kept it at that. But the big dude, he was coming out like he was bragging, like, you know, that he put it on Roscoe. But Roscoe didn't have any lumps on him or anything. He brought, got, Roscoe got body slammed. Because they're, li they're living, uh, at that time, they were my neighbors. And you can hear the commotion or whatever. But, you know, like I said, they didn't get busted for it. And they were and they were both white, and it was just a personal beef or whatever that they had going on. But Russell came out I was like, ah, you know, his back was fucked up a little bit because he got body slammed. Because you know, you, when you're in a close corridor like that in a cell, size really play a different. Especially if dude don't know how to fight, but he knows he's bigger than you, he can just wrap you up and toss you around. But going back to the story. You know, they had a dude that just came back, a dude named Jamie. He's a white dude that went home, you know, two years prior and then ended up coming back for another uh, eight years because he got caught with a pistol out here on the streets. But before he left, he had the unit. He was the shot caller for the white boys in the unit. So when he came back, they put him back in that position, you know, being the shot caller in, in the unit. Now, I always repeat, you know, over and over again that a lot of these dudes, when they um, get in a position of that, of being a spokesman or being a shot caller, you know, that title goes through their head and they start feeling themselves. So, you know, he has complaint from, you know, a couple other white dudes about, about Roscoe and, and White Boy, but mainly about White Boy, because White Boy, he just run a little while. And um, leading up to the incident, you know, I went up to his room one day and, you know, his white boy's room, he was selling with, uh, with, with another dude, some big-ass white dude, right? And the light was off. So I knock on the door, and white boy opens up the door, and I'm like, damn, what the fuck, homie? And he was all busted up. You know, white boy, he had two black eyes, his cheek was swollen, and I'm like, what the fuck? Goes, oh man, I jumped out there with my Sally, man, and he whooped me, right? <laughs> like, what the hell, right? But but these dudes ain't going around coming out there trying to tell on dude for getting beat up or or trying to make a scene. He's like, man, I just gotta fucking stay in my cell for a few days until I heal up, you know? Because, you know, whatever it was, it was White Boy's fault. You know, he jumped out there, called, called his Sally out, and got lumped up. But he was a G about it. He took his ass whooping like a man and stayed in the cell for the next few days to let himself heal up. But you know, every day we have stand-up count. At four o'clock, the CO comes up, they want your lights on, and you standing up while they do head count. Like he he was able to duck for about two or three days, but on the third or fourth day, the CO noticed that his face was all busted up. So they went and locked him up put him in the shoe, but they let him back out like two weeks later because, you know, he didn't tell on nobody and nobody on, in the unit was telling on him about what happened or nothing. So after he healed up, they didn't have no more reason to keep him in the shoe because when you go to the shoe, they got to write you up. They didn't catch him fighting. Nobody's talking about them fighting. So after he healed up, 
They let him back out in the shoe. But when he came back out in the shoe, the dude Jamie, I guess, didn't want him on the compound no more. But they know that if if he jump on White Boy, Roscoe's going to back him up and aid him. And I didn't know, like, all these things was brewing between the white dudes. Because, you know, I'm not privy to everybody's politics, and I don't want to be. But on the day of the incident, I'm sitting down there, you know, in front of my cell. Because from my cell, I could see, like, four TV. I lived over here in the corner about, you know, like I say, what, 113, 114, around there. I don't... So, and the white boys are up on the block. Roscoe is up on the second tier, and white boys down on uh, on the flats by the computer. But during the course of the day, there's rumors that the white boys gonna put a hit on somebody, right? You know, they always say, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna bust a move," but we don't know who they're gonna bust a move on. So we're just and we know, but we know it's in our block. You know, like. Leading up to it, we didn't know that there was all this shit, you know, they were plotting on the homie. You know, I called him the homie because I fuck with them tough. I eat with them, we smoke, we kick it. You know what I mean? And that's one of the reasons, like, these white dudes, they have issues with other white dudes that eat with other races or smoke with other races or drink with other races. They just, some of these dudes just on that goofy time. And there's no really changing the politics. But... You know, they pick and choose, you know what I mean? Like, if you're lame and you do that, they're going to quick to smash you off. But if you're somebody they fear or somebody they, they respect, then they make acceptance for it. But as far as Roscoe and White Boy go, you know, they couldn't do nothing to them because they had homies over there and they were good dudes and they ain't doing nothing that's foul or fucked up. They're not betraying their race or anything like that. They just... Fuck with other races, and one of them was me. So when I cook or whatever, I'm like, "Hey, what's up, man? You guys trying to put in? Grab your bowl." And they come in, bring out, bring in whatever items they bring in, and we cook and we eat. <clears throat> so on this day, I'm just sitting there. You know, when I'm not doing that, I just post up by my door because I can watch all three or four TVs from where I sit, and I just post up and and I look up. Cause you know we're we're waiting. It's almost it's almost count time. We've been waiting all day for for the show to pop off, but we don't really know. As far as me, I don't really know who the victim's gonna be. You know, so it's like about ten minutes to lockdown, and I see two dudes gaffle up Roscoe too, and they got some big dudes in there. The big white dudes in there. You know, all these all these dudes were like six feet tall and up. So two of them grab Roscoe, and they're not, but they're wrestling with him. They're not punching him. They're not trying to beat him up, because I guess Roscoe wasn't the target. The target was White Boy, and uh, so they just hand him up. One of them had him wrapped up, and the other one, they just got him on the ground sitting on him to keep him from going down to help White Boy, because at the same time when they did that, there was two other big-ass White Boys jumping on White Boy, and they're piecing him up, bing, bing. Knocked him down, but you know, white boy got heart. And like, he's my size. Maybe a couple inches taller than me, but dude got heart. He got back up and he's he's fighting two dudes down there. And Roscoe is pinned up on the second tier, so he couldn't go and help him. And of course, the CO sees the incident. They come and spray him down, whatever. And they all get taken to the shoe. Now, you know, with the politics, it's really... Like, who you got out there that's going to have your back? You know, if you're lame and nobody fucks with you and somebody put a hit on you, then that's the end of the issue. But if you got partners on, on a compound that ain't feeling what happened to you, you know, they're going to feel some type of way and want to get some get back. And with Roscoe and White Boy, a lot of dudes fuck with them. A lot of dudes from different races and a lot of white dudes fuck with them. You know, they've been soldiers. The whole time we were on in Florence, when shit pop off, they're on the front line. They done put in work multiple times in there. So when this dude Jamie came back and put a hit on him, a lot of people felt some type of way about it, right? So 
going back to the incident with the blacks and, te and, and Texas dude, why I'm seeing on the tier, you know, watching the whole incident. So why the DC dudes is downstairs stabbing a pro, I look up across the hallway from me and the white boys are into it. And they're jumping that dude, Jamie, the shot caller. Three of them are beating him up, booting him. And I'm just like, you know, I'm sitting there watching. I'm like, man, <laughs> it's just like, I didn't know the reason why they would. I mean, once that happened, I had an idea like, yeah, they were getting him back for, you know, putting the hit on white boy and Roscoe. But, you know, they just took advantage of the moment while everybody's running around and their focus was downstairs. Everything was chaotic. They just took the opportunity to start punishing Jamie, you know, <clears throat> and they were up, you know, I didn't know they, you know, I don't know how bad they punished him because like I said, you know, compared to what's going on with the white dudes and what was going on downstairs with the DC and pro, you know, that's a more entertaining aspect. But like at the same time, why, like, <clears throat> Like, it was just chaotic. You know, that's why I mentioned in the other video, shit was just everywhere. People were just running everywhere. And you got four DC dude stabbing this dude pro on a table. In the corner, you got a commote. You got a fight going on with the Black Rabbit, uh, Muhammad. But I couldn't really see that because they were behind the stairs. But we know there's a scuffle going on in that corner. And then now upstairs, on the, across the tier from me, it's the white boys. Three of them is jumping on Jamie, right? So when we get locked up, when we get taken to the shoe, you know, some of the dudes that was in the cage with us were white dudes. And my cellie was like, you know, Omar was like, man, he picked up some white dudes too? I was like, shit, they was over there on the other side of the unit getting it in. He's like, ah, what the fuck? Because, you know, we just been going through the lockdown for the sickness and all this stuff. And we just really trying to just get back into our routine because we always got things boiling, things in the fire that we're trying to, you know, get accomplished and whatever. But, you know, during that period in time, like I said, you know, we had four bodies within a four month period. And that's not counting all the stabbings in between and all the fights in between and all the other drama. But when we got locked down for that incident, you know, D.C., Washington, D.C., the people in Capitol Hill, they're like, nah, man, what the hell is going down over there in Florence? Why is it so chaotic, so violent over there? And they placed the penitentiary on a congressional lockdown. And they had us, you know, just fast forwarding it to, you know, they had a uh, USP Florence under a congressional review for almost a year. So, you know, when, when I come back out of the shoe or whatever, we were on modified lockdown because of uh, Washington, D.C. But to me, it's nothing new. It's like that throughout most of the USP. You know, I get letters, I get word from Pollock at this time that Pollock was the new bloody Beaumont. And I'm going to have people, as we go forward, as soon as I can figure this stuff out, I know I'm a little slow, I'm going to interview some of the homies that was over there in Pollock while all the craziness was going on. But till then, see you guys tomorrow. Welcome to the USP.